and welcome to the Smoke and Mirrors Radio Hour. My name is Jay Widener, and we are here every Monday through Friday from 6 to 7, although I won't be here tomorrow night. We're going to replay Peter Lavenda, a great show about the Nazis in South America, tomorrow night. Tonight, without further ado, because only really have about 40 minutes on this show in between the ads to really talk about stuff. And I got a guy I want to talk to. So without further ado, I am going to introduce you to the infamous Cliff High of Half Past Human. And I don't know, do you have like a, a three minute way to explain what it is you do so we can get to the really good stuff or should we just get to the good stuff? Let's just get to the do. good stuff. I mean, people can go and Google, <laughs> go Google web bots, you know. I'm tired of explaining it. <laughs> exactly. That's how I feel about my Henday stuff. It's like, just go read it. Uh, That's you why know, you wrote the stuff. book. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So Cliff has awesome computer program, which looks into things, and he's been able to predict events. And go Google him, and you'll find it out. But what we're here to talk about tonight is Cliff's kind of uh, piggybacked a, uh, his theory on top of Patrick Gerald's and a little dash of Hende and some Carl Kalaman and, and, and put it together and come up with a rather uh, evocative uh, uh, explanation for 2012. And although I try to stay on the positive, uh, I cannot deny what you are saying because your numbers are coming out right. And that's what worries me is when the math comes out right. It's so scary. why don't you tell us, yeah, tell us tell us about the sun. Let's start with the sun, because everybody on that listens to this program knows about how concerned I am with what's going on with the sun right now. And I think your explanation may be the one we've been looking for. Well, there's uh, my uh, data had always suggested that we were dealing with magnetics at a level that we could barely understand. And so I was always looking at the sun for some kind of an issue there. And unfortunately, I followed the same trail as almost everyone else and postulated something external to the solar system. However, Patrick Gerrell's work provides a um, mechanism within the sun itself that accounts for everything that we're seeing from the interplanetary uh, uh, problems, from the individual planets having the climate issues, and so on. And they all come back to the sun and a natural periodic cycle. And basically, it's a um, an issue of the sun's magnetics wind themselves up into a tizzy over about 11,500 years, and then they've got to decide, okay, we're going to blow off all this extra energy, and uh, they do it all at once. And that's fundamentally uh, Gerald's uh, uh, approach, and I just added a few things there that seem to make sense and also allow for the prediction of some other other items associated with it. So basically, what we have here is a 37-day rotation cycle on on, on, on the poles and, and on the poles. The poles which would be a natural should, cycle. Yeah, it should determine how fast the whole sun rotates uh, in, right. in total, but it doesn't because the sun has 98 percent of the mass and one percent or so of the angular momentum. And the planets, while they have very little mass relative to the sun, they only have about 1% of the mass in the solar system. They have 99% of the angular momentum. So they're dragging the sun's equator around and lapping the pole every 87 days. And apparently, if you do this over the course of 11,500 years, more or less, it gets to the point where uh, it starts manifesting as we see it. And it kind of makes sense. The... Uh, in my lifetime, the sun has changed from its uh, mellow yellow to its current intense white, and then sometimes mm. it uh, seems to be shading over slightly into blue. And this would be a, a known effect that we see within small magnetic containment vessels that are messing around with plasma. And these small containment vessels formed by giant magnets are called tokamaks. And if yes. you get the, your magnets out of alignment, you get the magnetic containment vessel all... Um, Distorted, and the plasma inside escapes, and, and normally you have a, you know, just lost a, a laboratory, but you learn from your lessons. And, it, and yeah. it appears to be generally the same kind of an effect that's occurring on the sun. And we have to acknowledge that even NASA has come out recently and said they haven't got a clue as to why the sun's behaving this way. You know, it should have been this, but no, it didn't do that. You know, it should have been into cycle 24 with some intensity, but if Absolutely. it's because they figured it was going to peak in 2012. And if it's going to do that, it should have started really uh, getting active two years ago, which it did not. In fact, the opposite happened. 
Correct. It got now, it got in my even. theory here, or in my um, addition to Gerald's work, um, it kind of makes sense that this would occur, that we'd have an absence of, of sunspots, because basically what occurs to create a sunspot is the coincident alignment of one of the magnetic lines of force being bent by the pull of the planets and sort of crawling up over the face of the sun, and it coincidentally aligns at 19.47 degrees of latitude with a um, structure internal to the sun itself. And if, it, if there is no uh, alignment with the structure, no sunspot is formed at that magnetic alignment point. If there is, the two hook up together for this internal rotation of the sun, approximately 26 degrees, and we would see the sunspot appear, be dark, which really is a cooling in the in the sort of elbow, if you will, of the magnetic bend, and yes. it would rotate around the planet as that bend wound its way up and, and towards the the pole, and then ultimately, though, in in the sense of many windings of of cloth around the uh, a croquet ball, ultimately you get to the point where those windings are all now below the the 19.47 degrees, and you should have an absence of sunspots. In fact, it should continue in a real sense, until the absolute blow-off of all this external energy. And it may indeed be even the last countdown, so to speak, when all the sudden spots shift over to, to a, a very chaotic kind, not a usual kind at all, but something that will erupt in a few hours and disappear. And these, are, these are predictable, and they would be occurring because the individual magnetic lines of force are not able to wrap themselves around the um, sun anymore, but they could still twist internally, thus briefly exposing holes in the sun's uh, intense magnetic uh, envelope around it and creating a, an illusion, so to speak, of a sunspot. And so if we get to that level where we've got these chaotic kind of eruptions all over the sun, I would be able yeah. to say that, all right, we're in you know X number of days of the final blow-off of this external energy. And it should be quite predictable from that point forward. So we're looking for um, sudden and fast magnetic storms uh, that, that come and go quickly. And when that Correct. starts happening on a daily or a weekly basis, we know we're getting close to the blow-off of this thing, which could result in what? Well, which will result in a giant magnetic uh, sphere headed outward. There are some questions as to whether the magnetic sphere would be of a uniform nature or a rather haphazard nature in terms of, you know, how much magnetism in what area of the sphere as it expands. But within some general constraints, that sphere should be fairly um, uh, equally magnetically active, and it should mm -hmm. erupt out well beyond the, the uh, orbits of the inner planets, and that we're in the inner planet category, and that may include us. And if, they, if that happens, then Earth is going to get hit with a, a wave of magnetism that may be so large and so intense that humans and other life would feel it as a form of gravity as it sort of went through the planet. And mm -hmm. in, in its very um, uh, most severe form, if it happens to be of a negative or southern polarity, it would cause a pole shift in our magnetic pole, which may result in a crustal shift as well. Mm-hmm. Well, the, uh, my uh, Caro friends in the Andes Mountains tell me that, uh, that what they predict is uh, uh, a term is called Pachacuti, which means the world turned upside down. And um, they, uh, I asked them what they saw happening around 2012, and they said, well, we're really going to miss our white brothers. Well, we're going to miss this, too, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I think they have plans. <laughs> well, you know, it kind of makes sense, too. I mean, this sort of thing happening periodically. Uh, Gerald's math is very precise. It makes sense if you imagine that there's this rather complex nature of the sun that gets all whipped up and, and maintains this um, state for a while, 11,000-some-odd years. Then you can look back and say, hmm, if that kind of thing occurs and you get the giant waves that Gerald uh, thinks would occur, then living in places like Machu Picchu make a whole lot of sense. And that's why they went to the trouble to create such.
Well, that's right. And the uh, legends, of course, are that Viracocha uh, stayed in the caves uh, during the last catastrophe and came out and recreated civilization. This is the, the very central myth of the, uh, of the Caro. And, and so we can see that uh, all of this has been going on for a long time, and it is a periodic thing. And as Falconelli warns us, the uh, nature is renewed by fire. So this is an event that actually could be argued in a bizarre spiritual way as a, a good thing. So um, because uh, well, it, that's, that's think, a complex thing. Go yeah, I, would say, I would actually think it is good, especially in electromagnetic and it probably is required to recharge our magnetosphere, which curiously recharges 11,000 years. That's exactly right. And, and, and so that I, I, I tell people that this has to happen because we're densifying at such a rapid rate. At this point, time is literally condensing. Um, we're going to, our, our reaction times are getting shorter, and, uh, uh, and a potential event, caused by human failure is uh, certainly quite possible at this moment. We're going to be right back. We're talking to Cliff High. Uh, Cliff, what's your uh, site with all the cool graphics? Where's that at? Uh, Hamfathuman.com. Pick it up off the main page called Radio Yeah, go there. Yeah, go there and look at his graphics. They're great. Okay, I'm Jay Widener. We're listening to the Smoke and Mirrors Radio Hour. And we'll be back with Cliff High in just a couple minutes. We're back. Smoke and Mirrors Radio Hour. I'm Jay Widener. We're talking to Cliff High, Half Past Human. Go to Radio Special there at the top and look at all the great stuff. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the things that I started tracking after I finished with the Hende work was to see if there was any um, anybody doing anything in in the power structure to prepare for what the Hende material was saying was going to happen. And, you know, that's when I found uh, the Georgia Guidestones and the stuff in the Denver airport, and and I started finding all this creepy stuff everywhere. I was and just going to call everywhere. it creepy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then I began looking into Freemasonry in a real way um, and uh, reading some of the more obscure Freemasonic books and things. And what I've come to realize is that the entire purpose of Freemasonry, as far as I can tell, is to pass on the information of this disaster. Sure, and to there, perpetuate it, that and get them uh, motivated and carry that forward whether they know it or not. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and they have, they, um, at, Robert Lawler has a book coming out, and I don't want to, I don't want to ace him on this because it's so cool. But he proves that they, that, that the people who built the United States know that there's some disaster coming. And I'm not talking about the people that are alive now. I'm talking about the people who created the United States. The founding fathers were completely aware of all this. And when you see his material, you just can't, it's impossible to believe. Impossible. And, and I want to get another thing out about what you were talking about with this 19.5. The the Merkaba, of course, are, most people know, and, and Hoagland's work, and we know that there's these these uh, massive uh, outpourings on all the planets.